Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Now, recently there's been a lot of talk about whether or not you should buy a new graphics card right now. And while these discussions always pop up near the end of a generation, they're more prevalent than ever this time around, given that you've been almost unable to buy a new graphics card for the past two years, and certainly unable to do so at a reasonable price. So today, we're going to look at what we believe to be the best value segment. But before we do, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by ASUS's latest range of ROG Anime Peripherals. The new ROG Strix Flare 2 Anime Gaming Mechanical Keyboard features an Anime Matrix LED display, 8000Hz polling rate, ROG NX Mechanical Switches or Cherry MX Switches, swappable switches, metal media controls, and a wrist rest with light diffuser. And there's also the new ROG Delta S Anime Lightweight Gaming Headset with a customizable Anime Matrix display, Hi-Fi ESS 9281 Quad DAC, AI noise cancelling mic, and is compatible with PC, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so Tim and myself started addressing questions regarding whether or not you should buy a new graphics card in our Q&A series a few months ago. Our advice has been something along the lines of, if you can, we recommend avoid buying a high-end graphics card, such as an RTX 3080, for example, or really anything better than that, we suggest you hold off. They're still overpriced and we think prices will continue to drop, particularly after the next generation of GPUs is released in what we believe to be just a few months time from now. Making right now a horrible time to dump big money on two-year-old technology. Rather, if you're desperate for a GPU to be waiting out the crypto boom, we recommend going for something more mid to low end as these products won't decline in value nearly as much. The dollar losses will be smaller, and it's likely going to be many more months before their replacements arrive. Therefore, we've been recommending parts such as the Radeon RX 6600, and right now you can snap one up for less than $300 US, with a typical asking price around $280. But it wouldn't be right to just recommend the Radeon GPU without a look at the GeForce alternative, and for that we have the GeForce RTX 3050, though it is a little more pricey at $330 US. So, today we're going to see how the two compare across 51 games at 1080p and 1440p using the Ryzen 7 5000X 3D and 32GB of dual rank dual channel memory. For the display drivers, Radeon Adrenal Edition 22.6.1 was used, and for testing the GeForce GPU Game Ready Driver 516.59 was used. As usual, we'll go over the data for about a dozen of the games tested, and then we'll take a look at all 51 games in a single graph. But please note, all graphs will be made available to Floatplan and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Fortnite using the medium quality preset, we see that both GPUs kept frame rates above 100 FPS at 1080p, and even 1440p. That said, the 6600 was up to 20% faster at 1080p, seeing we're looking at the 1% lows, while it was 21% faster at 1440p, so that is quite a significant performance advantage that gamers will certainly notice. Next up, we have a 2022 release in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, and wow, the performance here with the RTX 3050 using the high quality preset was pretty horrible, especially relative to the RX 6600. Performance at 1080p was 66% greater with the Radeon GPU and 44% stronger at 1440p, where the difference will be even more noticeable. We're looking at at least two tiers of additional performance with the Radeon RX 6600, and that's an embarrassing result for NVIDIA given the pricing. The RTX 3050 also gets absolutely obliterated in God of War. At 1080p, the 6600 was an insane 63% faster, pushing the average frame rate up from 60 FPS to 98 FPS. Again, that's more than an extra tier of GPU performance right there. Meanwhile, things only get worse for the RTX 3050 at 1440p, where the Radeon GPU was up to 81% faster, going from 37 FPS to a very smooth 67 FPS. And it's more of the same with Forza Horizon 5, a complete demolition with the RX 6600 delivering 60% more performance at 1080p and almost 50% more at 1440p. Granted, the RTX 3050 still provided perfectly playable performance using the higher quality preset, but you're again getting much higher performance of the Radeon GPU, meaning you can either increase the visual quality or enjoy a truly high refresh rate experience. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has always been better suited to Nvidia hardware, and although the RX 6600 still wins here, it is by a very slim margin, resulting in more of a draw, I'd say. Still, despite being the cheaper option, the Radeon GPU was 5% faster at 1080p and 9% faster at 1440p. 
Dying Light 2 is yet another 2022 release where the RX 6600 completely cans the RTX 3050, this time delivering 49% more frames at 1080p and 34% more at 1440p. Those are some truly massive margins, particularly at 1080p, where the 3050 fell short of 60fps, while the 6600 averaged 79fps. Far Cry 6 was released late last year, and although this is an AMD-sponsored title, performance between Radeon and GeForce GPUs is typically quite competitive, yet here, the RTX 3050 gets left behind, trailing by a 30% margin at 1080p and 28% at 1440p. Next, we have Apex Legends and Light PUBG. The results here are semi-competitive, as the RX 6600 was just 15% faster at 1080p and 8% faster at 1440p. The 1440p margin is legitimately quite small, though 15% at 1080p is quickly becoming a significant performance difference. It's just a lot smaller than the 50% plus margins we've seen in a lot of the other recently released titles. Interestingly, both GPUs maxed out at around 350 FPS in our Counter-Strike Global Offensive benchmark, while the RX 6600 was 18% faster at 1440p. Still, as you'd expect, both did deliver highly playable performance for this older title, but when pushed a bit harder, the RX 6600 did come out on top. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is known to play well with AMD hardware, and this matchup is no exception. This time, the RX 6600 enjoyed a 42% performance advantage at 1080p, and a 33% win at 1440p. Basically, the 1% lows of the 6600 match that of the average frame rate for the RTX 3050, which is another embarrassing result for the green team. Now, despite the fact that Watch Dogs Legion is an NVIDIA-sponsored title, the RTX 3050 doesn't enjoy any kind of performance advantage here. Rather, it's another easy win for the RX 6600, delivering 41% greater performance at 1080p, and 29% greater performance at 1440p. So moving on then, Red Dead Redemption 2. This was tested using slightly dialed down quality settings, but even so, it's still a very demanding title and perhaps a little too demanding for the RTX 3050, which couldn't even reach 60 FPS at 1080p. The RX 6600, on the other hand, did manage to break the 60 FPS barrier with 70 FPS on average, making it 35% faster and then 27% faster at 1440p. Next, we have Sniper Elite 5, and this is our first time testing with this title. And with these more mid-range GPUs, I decided to settle for the medium quality preset, which admittedly was a tad easy for the RTX 3050, managing 144 FPS at 1080p. Still, it's possible to boost performance by around 30% with the RX 6600, and perhaps the 28% boost at 1440p is more relevant, as that got us into high refresh rate territory. Now, another new game to make its way into our testing is Hunt Showdown, and again, for this testing I've opted for the medium quality preset. Again, the RX 6600 was 31% faster at 1080p and 21% faster at 1440p, so a handy performance advantage here, and again, it meant high refresh rate gaming was possible at 1080p with the RX 6600. Yet another new game added to our battery of benchmarks is F1 2022, which of course will be replacing F1 2021. Here we have more competitive data than what we've seen from the bulk of our testing. This time the RX 6600 is roughly 20% faster at both tester resolutions. So it's still a very favorable margin there for the Radeon GPU, but it's also less than half that of the other newly released titles. The second last game we're going to look at is Halo Infinite, and here we have another example where the RX 6600 is 20% faster at 1080p, and near enough to the same at 1440p, where we see an 18% margin. So, the RTX 3050 certainly doesn't get as thrashed here, but typically we'd view a 20% margin at a similar price point to be a devastating loss for the slower product. Last up, we have ACC for all you racing simulator fans. This is another title that sees around a 20% margin. In fact, the RX 6600 was exactly 20% faster at 1080p, and then 15% faster at 1440p. Using the medium quality settings, either GPU does appear to work well enough, but the fact that you're getting around 20% more out of the Radeon GPU while saving a good chunk of change does make it the obvious option. Well, that was certainly a devastating matchup for NVIDIA, but we have only looked at 17 of the 51 games tested, so let's move on to see how the RTX 3050 and RX 6600 stack up across all of the games tested. Okay, so here's some pretty damning results. At 1080p, the RTX 6600 was on average 29% faster across the 51 games tested. And there were just five examples of single digit margins, 
with 75% of all the games tested favoring the Radeon GPU by a 20% margin or greater. Interestingly, a lot of the games where AMD crushed Nvidia are the newer blockbuster titles that scale well with resizable bars, such as Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, God of War, Forza Horizon 5, Dying Light 2, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Overall though, this is very much a clear win for the Radeon RX 6600. And things didn't really improve much at 1440p where the margin was still over 20%, this time favoring the RX 6600 by a 23% margin on average. There were a few mixed results here though, for example the RTX 3050 managed to come out on top with Metro Exodus, Doom Eternal and Warhammer 3, but was utterly destroyed in God of War where it ran into some kind of performance issue. Most games though favoured the 6600 by a 20% margin or greater, hence the 23% margin on average, so an easy win here for AMD. Right, so we've now had a good look at how these two GPUs stack up in terms of performance, and given the pricing, this one, it's not a hard comparison or call. Clearly, you'd be mad not to buy the Radeon RX 6600, it's over 20% faster while costing at least 15% less. There's basically no angle I can take where the RTX 3050 is even worth considering. Stuff like ray tracing performance, it's not even worth discussing at this performance tier in my opinion, and even DLSS is a bit of a tough sell given it generally doesn't work that well at 1080p, though it can help to improve the 1440p performance without noticeably diminishing image quality, though that does depend more on a per game basis. Even so, DLSS is quickly becoming less of a selling point, particularly for those of you with lower end hardware where I feel upscaling technologies still need quite a bit of work. Moreover, AMD's FSR 2.0 is nearly as good, and game adoption has been quite rapid, and we certainly expect that to continue, especially given that it is an open source technology. As for power consumption, I never bother including that data as it doesn't change from the original day one reviews, but in short the RTX 3050 and RX 6600 basically use the same amount of power, and that does make the Radeon GPU more efficient in terms of performance per watt but you can comfortably power either of them with a basic 500 watt power supply, so really power usage is not a major concern. Now, if you've got a budget of around $350, a more direct competitor for the RTX 3050 in terms of pricing would be the RX 6600 XT, which can be had for around $360, so just shy of a 10% premium. The XT version is on average about 15% faster than the non-XT model that we looked at here, so in our opinion, it's certainly not worth spending almost 30% more on, which is why we opted for the 6600, not XT. But when compared to the RTX 3050, the 6600 XT would be about 10% more expensive for about 40% more performance, so it's obviously still a far better deal. But as we discussed at the start of the video, we feel that right now you really are best off spending as little as possible, as GPU prices will almost certainly continue to tumble. Moreover, with next-gen GPUs right around the corner and promising significant performance gains, now is not the time to spend big on old technology. As disappointed as we were initially with the prospect of RX 6600 performance at an MSRP of $330 US, in the current climate, it has managed to shape up as one of the best deals going around, especially at less than $300, so below MSRP. The RTX 3050, on the other hand, that promised gamers to end the crazy high prices by offering decent performance at $250 US, but ultimately Nvidia failed epically on that one, as today it still costs well over the suggested price and gets completely mopped by the competition. So, this one isn't a it depends type situation, there's really no reason why you'd spend more on the RTX 3050 and sacrifice loads of performance in the process. Just get the RX 6600, enjoy gaming, and wait to see what the next generation has in store. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content, maybe some more big GPU comparisons coming up, not sure on that one. Maybe some Intel Arc GPUs incoming as well, so yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, also, if you'd like to become a Harborbox community member, we have Patreon or Floatplane. Links for those are in the video description. You'll get access to the stuff we do each month. Tim and I get together for a monthly live stream. We have a Discord server, so you can chat to us and the rest of the awesome Harborbox community there. Behind the scenes content, Tim's building a new studio, so we're fitting that out. There's a couple of videos already of that, so they're pretty interesting. And behind, no, uh, Q&As. I already said behind the scenes content. Q&As. So check all that stuff out there if you're interested. But you know, if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.